but he's talking about children's past life memories. As I talk today, listen for these three things as I tell the stories of these children's memories. Because I think this is particularly fascinating because of the purity of these memories coming from very young children. They're very credible stories that offer very convincing evidence for the continuation of a personal consciousness after death. Many of you have probably read some of the accounts of your death experiences, which are pretty amazing, but this is taking it a step further because these are children who remember having lived before. They usually remember their deaths and they remember their previous lives. Also, as you listen to these stories, hopefully it will expand your idea of the origins of personality. As one of my mentors, Ian Stevenson, said, there are three streams that feed into personality, nature, nurture, and reincarnation. So as you listen to these stories, keep that in mind, and hopefully you'll walk away feeling different about children and about reincarnation. And my work in this field is a very small field worldwide, I have to say. There are probably a dozen people doing this kind of research in the world, taking it seriously. And um, my research diverges from theirs in that I'm not really trying to verify every case of a child's past life memory. Because of what I'm going to tell you, I saw the potential for healing the soul through these memories. Children bring up these memories because quite often they need to heal trauma from the past. So, how did I get into this? <laughs> well, I was minding my own business in, as a mother in Asheville, North Carolina, where we were living in the 80s. And on the 4th of July, 1988, we had a picnic at our house, and we had a lot of kids there with their parents. And we took my son, my five-year-old son, Chase, to the fireworks display. And as soon as the big booming sounds began, he became absolutely terrified. And it was odd because we had taken him to other Fourth of July celebrations before, but on this particular evening, he became absolutely hysterical, so much so that I had to take him home. And he really wouldn't calm down. He was crying. And I remember rocking him in the rocking chair. He was that big at the time. Um, and I couldn't figure out what had happened. Um, you know, immediately I was trying to figure out if he had been exposed to any loud sounds like that before. And as far as I knew, since I was a stay-at-home mother, he hadn't. But I figured, well, he probably had too much sugar and was just hyped up from the, all the kids at the house. So I kind of wrote it off as any mother would. But then a few weeks later, we went to an indoor swimming pool in Asheville, the first time we'd been there. And as soon as we walked into the building, um, people were diving on the diving board, making this big reverberating noise next from the walls. And again, this big booming sound made Chase hysterical. And he pulled me out of the building, and I said, what's wrong? And he said, I'm scared of those noises. And that was it. He, he finally calmed down, but I thought, well, this is really curious. And I didn't really know what to do about it. So as fate would have it, and I, I believe everybody's journey is orchestrated, and mine certainly was, a hypnotherapist from Florida was visiting me in Asheville because a year earlier I had done a past life regression with him. His name is Norman Ng. Because I had chronic lung problems. And that in that one two-hour session, my lung problems were cured after I remember dying of consumption in the 19th century and remembering a very emotional death of dying in the gas chambers of World War II, where 